Everybody got quiet. It must be time to get started. <laughs> I want to call the October 6th, can't believe it's October, 2020 meeting to new order. Uh, we will be led in our invocation this morning by Sister Miriam Fiducia from the St. Columba Catholic Church. We will also be led in our Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Crutchfield. Those that can stand, please do so. Good morning. <clears throat> it's hard to recognize people. <laughs> the new normal. I hope it's not normal for forever. Uh, thank you for uh, the invitation to be here this morning and to to lead you in prayer and thank you also for your service to the city of Dothan. So let's take a moment to quiet ourselves and acknowledge that we are in God's presence. Good and gracious God, we praise and thank you as we begin the business of this day. We recognize that we are in a different space these past months, in our city, our state, our country, and our world. There has been unrest, fear, tension, division. There is a pandemic that we have been living with since March. There is economic uncertainty and instability. All of this has changed our lives locally and globally. So we come before you today, Lord, as all our business is set against this backdrop. We pray for the sick among us, especially those suffering from COVID-19. We ask for wisdom and courage for all who are in positions of leadership and authority. We pray that you will give us patience as we discuss, plan, and decide the business of this day, as well in the days and weeks and months ahead. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I want to make, make, uh, make note, City Clerk, that uh, uh, we have two commissioners that are absent this morning. Commissioner Dorsey is out with some sinus issues. Commissioner Fleming's uh, wife, Tamika, her mother passed away, and uh, we all share in our condolences uh, to her and the family during this time. Need approval of the minutes from the September 15th, 2020 meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Uh, any discussion? Yes. All in favor say yay. Yay. Any opposed say nay. All right, we, we have a, a long list of proclamations this morning, which is good. We're going to take our time with each one of them because each one of them are extremely important to us today. So uh, our first one is going to be a tech presentation from the Rotary Miracle Field Foundation. Uh, so if Officer Gogan will bring them in, then we'll meet you there. Morning again. Good morning. I want to make sure I have everybody's name and, and are, are here with us. Oh, yep, Tyson did follow us in, didn't he? Um, we have with us this morning the Rotary Miracle Field Foundation. James Etheridge is president of the Dothan Rotary Club Monday. Uh, we have Heidi Condry, who's president of the Dothan Tuesday Rotary Club. And Bruce McNeil, president of the Rotary Miracle Field Foundation. Uh, so it's my pleasure to be able to read this morning this proclamation uh, or this tech pre presentation. So I'm going to yield the mic to you this morning. Well, uh, the Rotary Miracle Field Foundation obviously has uh, a partnership with the city of Dothan. We have a financial obligation 
and uh, we did have a $100,000 commitment, uh, uh, I think, starting last year. Uh, our foundation has to raise money the hard way, uh, nickel and dime at a time. And Mr. COVID uh, has kind of interrupted that, uh, so we've slowed down. But from our last fundraiser, a uh, golf tournament, uh, we did raise some $10,000, and uh, we're here today to uh, share that with you. Uh, but I also wanted to mention one of your own, uh, Tyson Carter, is part of our foundation board, and we thank you for allowing him to do that also. James. Uh, James Etheridge with the Dothan Rotary Club meets on Monday. We like to sing. Uh, so anyhow, I'm not going to sing for you today, even though I love to. Uh, thank you very much, uh, City of Dothan, uh, Mayor, and Commission, for working with us and letting us be part of the Dothan Miracle Field and, and the also the the uh, all the facilities out there. Thank you for your support, and we're glad that we're able to be part of this also for our community. Hey, Heidi Condrich with the Dothan Tuesday Rotary Club, and I also want to thank the, the city of Dothan for being a part of the Dothan Miracle Field, the Rotary Miracle Field, and uh, for letting us be a part of that. And so we want to do everything we can to support that and. Today we will present you guys with a $10,000 check in, uh, it, with our appreciation. They don't let me hold money long. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> wow. Um, we are, we are blessed in our community with civic clubs and civic organizations that do give back to our community. And Rotary is, is uh, our two clubs uh, that have done so for a long time. We are grateful to them as well. Um, Larry, you coming up? So we, we have next um, our proclamation. And um, Larry Patrick is, is here to represent uh, a family that's dear to us and a man that's dear to us, and that is Johnny Oppert. I think we're going to have him or have him on Zoom uh, and so that his family can uh, also see us. He's not able to be here this morning um, because of the COVID restriction and want to take care and be sure that his health and safety is, is taken care of. But we wanted to take time this morning to honor uh, Johnny Oppert. Um, I'm not sure. Do I need? I'm not getting. Do I need to wait until we are on Zoom, or are we good to go? I don't see anything zooming. Can somebody from the back uh, in the sound room? I, I want to make sure we get this right before we do it. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what. Who? Where is somebody with us? I just record with my cell phone. That's exactly that? what I was gonna say. We can, we Plan can, B. we can do that here. And uh, okay, we're good. All right. Hey, why don't you step up right over here if you don't mind, and that way you get in that picture. Um, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go on because we're gonna take it. We've got Commissioner can we, Kenward. Can we, can we check and see they're they're waiting on Zoom right now? They're, okay. They're in whatever they're supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> we don't have it. Okay. We don't have it. So please tell them we're gonna we're going to uh, send this to them right away and and offer our apologies. We could do that either way. You want to FaceTime it too? Kelly Colbert? Okay. We got time. Not, we can get a teenager in here. Teenagers, this is all we do. 
Who, who's the youngest one on the, on the commission? <laughs> there we go. You're the closest thing we got. You say Sam McKelly? I'm the closest yeah, thing we got. That's sad. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, he's gonna. You're just gonna do FaceTime. I got him right here. Go ahead. You do? Okay. Hey, coach. You got All right. Can you hear us, Coach? Can you hear me? Okay. We're finna do your proclamation. Go ahead, Mayor. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and we want to again uh, stress that that uh, today is an important day. I want to start us off in reading our proclamation this morning. We're here to honor Johnny Oppert and declare it Johnny Oppert Day. So if you will, let me read what we have uh, written today. And we are glad to have the Oppert family and Johnny on and being able to hear us. We know we're not, he's not able to be here. We have the COVID restrictions, but we are, we are proud that uh, he's able to join us through technology. Where it has been said that the best definition of leadership is influence. If that is the case, for more than six decades, Coach Johnny Oppert has personified this simple and profound definition. His life, his work, his relationships, and his faith all tell the story of a life well lived. And whereas Johnny Oppert has been called an icon in the Wiregrass area, indeed he is. Years of coaching have garnered him respect from his many opponents. It has also endeared him to countless individuals that have had the good fortune to be coached by him, to learn from him, to follow athletically behind him, and to go on and coach in high school and college, all the while passing on to others what they have received. His influence has carried him into the State Junior College Hall of Fame, Sanford University Baseball Hall of Fame, the Wiregrass Sports Hall of Fame, along with many other sports and civic honors. Whereas his influence is not limited to the world of athletics alone, Johnny has been instrumental in shaping the lives of many of our civic leaders, our business people, teachers, and followers of Christ. On this occasion, we are reminded of what a life calling looks like and how God uses this man who willingly lives his life for a higher purpose, a God-given purpose. Johnny, from an early on, believed that coaching was his calling from God and thus gave himself to that end. And whereas Johnny Albert has been a competitor all of his life, his gifts and skills on the playing field and court, both professionally and as an amateur, have been apparent to all who know him. His passion to win has always been expressed with class and respect for his competitors. Johnny has always been a communicator and a teacher with a desire to help others understand the truth about life, God, and how to be upstanding men and women of character. Now, therefore, I, Mark Saliba, Mayor of the City of Dothan, and in such capacity, do hereby proclaim October 6, 2020, as Johnny Oppert Day, and say thank you for being an influencer, for being the real deal, for giving yourself to this community, and for making an eternal difference in the lives of so many. For the Bible says, tribute to whom tribute is due. We are grateful and we are thankful, Johnny Oppert, for your life that you have led and your leadership and influence. Now I'm going to turn it over to Larry Patrick, who's representing the family today. Yes, sir. Well, I'm honored uh, to even get to stand here uh, in honor of this, this gentleman. Um, I got to know Coach Oppert uh, a lot better. I knew him, been knowing him since I've been in Dothan. Uh, 1979 but I knew him a lot better when uh, we were put to the task of uh, holding a the hoop classic and I told uh, when we got put with when I got put with that task I told Mike West that if we we're going to make it work that we needed one person and that was coach Johnny Oppert and I learned coach Oppert a lot better uh, than I had ever known him before and I can tell you that the city ha doesn't have a better representative and ambassador uh, the city, the county, and the tri-states area as Coach Johnny Oppert. And I'm honored to accept this in his behalf. 
Thank y'all very much. Appreciate and love you. Congratulations, Coach. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. All right. It's good to have positive and wonderful things to celebrate this morning. Uh, we have next, we have uh, our Red Ribbon Week. Miss Judy Goddard, I see, is in the lead. Can you come on forward? We also have, uh, with Judy, we have, who's the executive director for the Dothan Houston County Substance Abuse Partnership. We have Petra uh, Osmond, who is the youth council member. We're glad to have you with us as well this morning. And so if we are here this morning, and again, we have lots of proclamations, but each and every one of them are extremely important for us today. Whereas alcohol and marijuana abuse in this nation have reached epic stages, youth are some of the biggest abusers of these drugs, with 51.1% of 12th graders using marijuana in the past year and 35.7% using alcohol. Whereas the most striking findings across the country is a significant increase in vaping. Vaping is second only to alcohol use among teenagers, with 40.6% of high school seniors surveyed last year. And whereas with education, the misuse of prescription opioids have declined significantly over the past few years, down to 2.7% of all high school seniors, there is hope in winning the war on drugs, and that hope fight lies in education and drug demand reduction, coupled with the hard work and determination of organizations such as the Dothan-Houston County Substance Abuse Partnership to foster a healthy, drug-free lifestyle. And whereas the most effective way to reduce the cycle of youth drug addiction and the crime it causes is to reduce demand, these eff this effort begins at home. And it depends upon the active participation of families, schools, and communities. Teens that consistently learn about the risks of drugs from their parents are up to 50% less likely to use drugs than those who don't. And whereas the National Red Ribbon Campaign will be celebrated in every community in America during Red Ribbon Week, which is October 23rd through the 31st. Now, therefore, I, Mark Saliba, Mayor of the City of Dothan, do hereby proclaim 23, October 23rd through the 31st, 2020, as Red Ribbon Week in the City of Dothan and urge all citizens to join in the week's activities and programs in our community and work all year long to build our community coalition to address the use of and, the, and abuse of drugs and alcohol, increase awareness and develop educational programs to create effective changes in attitudes and usage that will make our community drug free. Thank you so much. Is it okay if I take my mask off? Thank you so much. Ooh, I can breathe. <sighs> Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, and City Manager for allowing us to be here today. Uh, back in 1985, DEA agent T.T. Camarino was tortured and killed in Mexico. His family knew that they needed to do something to honor his life, so they started wearing a small red ribbon. This small gesture has grown into the largest drug prevention campaign in the nation. Our mission statement of the partnership is to promote drug prevention through education within our schools and our community. Watch out, we're getting ready to come towards you. <laughs> we're reaching out. Red Ribbon Week um, for the partnership is not just a week, it is the whole year, 365 days a year. That is what we do. We uh, educate our children and the community. With COVID, our education is looking a little different this year. But thank goodness we're able to do it. Uh, wonderful Zooming sessions. Uh, we have already started in classes. Children are very eager for us to be there. They're excited. Um, and it's just amazing. But we do know that our job is important. And no matter 
what changes we have to make, we are going to be there for them. I brought with me today one of our youth council members, Petra. Petra has been a youth council member going on almost two years. She uh, was appointed yesterday as our Chick-fil-A ambassador, a leader ambassador uh, for the youth council. She is also an avid contributor for the um, podcast that our children started, our youth council started uh, last year. It's called For Teen Information. Good morning, everyone. My name is Petra Osmond. I am a senior at Ridgecrest Christian School. And like what Ms. Hughes just said, I'm going on two years at the Youth Council. And what I've learned in the Youth Council is the most important thing any young person like me should ever learn. Things like drug prevention, the, the dangers of alcohol use, and things like that. And personally, my dad worked for 25 years in the federal prison system counseling uh, drug addicted inmates and had a history the inmates that had history of drug abuse and I understand the importance of educating people while they're young in the dangers of that that their future could be completely altered if they make that one decision to take drugs and uh, I believe that if we teach these young people now by going into schools that they have a better future as leaders of our community to make a better change in the world. Thank you. I just want to say how refreshing and wonderful it is to have a young person as a model, and we thank you for your, your courage to do so, and especially in today's atmosphere. So thank you for that. All right, we have next the Homeless Connect Month. We have David Jamison, who is president of the Southeast Alabama Homeless Coalition. Cody Kirkhoff, who's the executive director of the harbor. Welcome again, gentlemen. Spoke to you earlier. Thank you for being here and bringing this to, to light to us today. Um, get my eyeballs back on. Where it is the mission of Southeast Alabama Coalition for the homeless to assist people who are homeless to move out of these circumstances and become self-sufficient. And whereas toward this end, we assist the homeless in our area in improving their quality of life through a twice-year food and supplies drive. And whereas Seach's goal is to reach out twice a year to as many of the residents of Houston County as possible, asking them to drop off at a collection point, food, toiletries, and other supplies for a homeless connect. And whereas by dropping off supplies directly to the nonprofits in October 2020, the public will be encouraged to interact with numerous groups who work daily with the homeless, getting to know their missions and needs for the Homeless Connect, and discover future volunteer opportunities with the nonprofits. And whereas Seach's Homeless Connect is moving from a one day event to covering the entire month of October, thus allowing Houston County residents more time to gather and drop off supplies and to directly engage with the nonprofits in Houston County who serve the homeless. Now, therefore, I'm Mark Saliba, Mayor of the City of Dothan, in such capacity do hereby proclaim October 2020 as Homeless Connect Month. And I want to say that uh, th this group and the SEATS group have done a tremendous job of working together and, and providing uh, a, a one resource in one area that brings all of the resources together, working together and collaborating and filling the gaps where we may be missing some gaps. And I, I am very appreciative of y'all's collaborative work. So thank you. On behalf of Seats of Southeast Alabama Coalition for the Homeless, um, we and all the agencies and ministries represented, we say thank you. Uh, it is wonderful and rare to live in a city that is so supportive um, and supportive of our initiative to uh, end what our goal is, is to end unwanted homelessness in this area. Um, and we, so we say thank you. We love the, uh, the initiative, the Love Dothan initiative that's going into neighborhoods because um, we believe uh, as many people in those neighborhoods are living in a near homeless lifestyle. As we build up those neighborhoods, 
it, it combats those who are maybe on the verge of going into homelessness as well. As I said, our goal is to end unwanted homelessness. Um, we do not want to see people continue to live in that lifestyle. Um, there will always be people that desire to live in that lifestyle, but there are many that are fighting to get out of it. The number one thing that we hear all the time is, why don't they just get a job? Um, and our hope is to educate and inform and also have people join us in this initiative uh, because it isn't just about getting a job. It's about the IDs that they don't have, the Social Security cards, the birth certificates. It's about the transportation. And it's about the number one cause of homelessness is ultimately the catastrophic loss of family at some point in their life. That led to a myriad of other issues financially, addiction, and so forth. Uh, our hope, again, as I said, is to end unwanted homelessness. Our ultimate hope is that Seek doesn't have to exist. The harbor no longer has to exist. Um, so thank you for this, for this October. Our hope is it brings light continually that people from this community will partner with us um, and stay tuned. Uh, Thursday, we have a press conference of one more step with Habitat for Humanity uh, and Seek represented uh, with some good things uh, going forward. So we say thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner and uh, City Manager. City Manager. Thank you. You'd like to say anything, Dave? Okay. All right. Well, once again, thank you. Uh, they have done a tremendous Y'all do wonderful work, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right. Next group is Publix Power We. Billy Mays, Boca Utilities Director, is right behind me <laughs> like a ninja. <laughs> I hope you're supporting me. Um, Good deal. Everybody's here, right? Okay. Uh, first, I wanted to say, too, and I always do because I want to make sure those that are, are serving for the commission are on the commission. Commissioner Kirkland serves on the AMEA board, and we are appreciative of his connection with Dokum Utilities as well. Thank you, Commissioner, for that and your work. Um, we, we, we have had some trying times, and we've had some storms, and we will could see some more storms. And so they are, they are ever so needed, especially when those storms come. And y'all respond well, and we appreciate what y'all do each and every day, but especially in times of storms and chaos. Whereas Dothan Utilities provides our homes, business farms, social services, and local government agencies with reliable, efficient, and cost-effective electricity, employing sound business practice designed to ensure the best possible service, at not-for-profit rates, and whereas Dothan Utilities is a valuable community asset that contributes substantially to the well-being of local citizens through energy efficiency, customer service, environmental protection, economic development, and safety awareness, and whereas this community's public power system, Dothan Utilities' first and only purpose is to work in partnership with its customer owners to furnish an essential public service and the best customer service to the community and citizens at lower cost rates. And whereas Dothan Utilities will continue to work to ensure that consumers benefit from any changes in the electric utility industry, just as it has since 1898, the year when the utility was created to serve all the citizens of Dothan, Alabama. Now, therefore, I, Mark Saliba, Mayor of the City of Dothan, do hereby proclaim the week of October 4th through the 10th, 2020, as Public Power Week in the city of Dothan in honor of Dothan Utilities for its contributions to the community and makes its consumer owners, policymakers, and employees more aware of its overall contributions to their well-being. And I also want to say how much we appreciate uh, Dothan Utilities being a good neighbor and uh, to all of those other cities in the state that uh, have needed someone and, and you came to, the, came to the, their service. So thank you so much for that as well. First of all, I have Alan McJunkin here to represent the crew. If you don't know Alan, he's the main person behind our restoration in Hurricane Michael, along with Chris Phillips and our other staff, and we couldn't do it without him. He's a great guy. I tried to get him to talk today. He said this was what he was going to do. 
<laughs> but, but I do have to thank the mayor, the commission, city manager, um, Commissioner Kirkland for his support on our MEA board. You all just don't know. He's really helped us out and saved the city a lot of money. But we appreciate the opportunity to serve you all, to serve the citizens of Dothan, as a public power provider, provide a better way of life for all of us. We couldn't do it without you. We couldn't do it without the citizens and the customers. So we do appreciate it. We appreciate the support. And we appreciate the AMEA group and the other public power providers that come to our aid when we need it. We're willing to go help them. It's tough on the guys. They've got to leave their families, work hard for long hours and days. We're willing to do it to give them the support that they give us. And so we do appreciate it. Thank you very much. In case you wanted to say something before you leave. Uh, all right. <laughs> We, we are very thankful. You know, electricity is one of those things that everybody thinks it should be there and it will always be there until it's not and something happens. And then it's like like my 15-year-old. He freaks out because there's no Internet. And so we are grateful for electricity each and every day. Uh, we are also grateful for our fire department of the city of Dothan. And uh, call forward to Fire Chief Larry Williams and Battalion Chief David Hasty, please. All right. Good. All right, I'm going to read our proclamation, Chief. Whereas the city of Dothan, Alabama is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting in Dothan, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes the locations where people are at the greatest risk from fire, and whereas two of every five home uh, fires start in the kitchen, with 31% of those fires resulting from unattended cooking, and whereas residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will be there and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and whereas Dothan's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through fire prevention and protection education, and whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme, Serve Up Fire Safety in the Kitchen, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, I'm Mark Sleeve, the mayor of the city of Dothan. Do here proclaim October 4th through the 10th, 2020, is Fire Prevention Week throughout this city and urge all of the people of Dothan to practice fire safety by checking their kitchens for fire hazards and using safe cooking practices during Fire Prevention Week 2020 and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Dothan Fire and Emergency Services. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my mayor. Thank you, commission. Thank you, Mr. Cowper and the citizens for proclaiming this week. This is a week we always look forward to. This is a commission meeting we get excited about <laughs> because we get to come and, and talk about fire prevention week and turning our attention to fire prevention, but also to recognize those that really make things happen when we do have fires and medical calls, our members. So it's a time when we get to recognize and give awards to our, our basic ranks in our department. So with that said, because we, we need to go, go for time, so I'm going to turn it over to our battalion chief over our fire prevention division, Chief David Hastie. Okay. All right, so first of all, let me just say thank you, Mayor and Commissioners and City Manager for allowing us time to, uh, to recognize our very important members of the year. Um, so just real quick about how we come to arrive at a member of the year. We have four different ranks that we give out members of the year. That would be our, our rookies, our firefighters, our sergeants, and then our officers, which is our captains. Um, so anybody can recommend anyone else throughout our department. So a firefighter can recommend another firefighter, so it could be peer-to-peer, -peer, it could be a subordinate or supervisor. So it gives everybody an opportunity to participate for this. These four guys, or actually these three guys, we've got one member that's unable to come this morning, feeling a little under the weather, so our officer won't be here today. But these four guys right here rose to the top. We, what we do is I collect all the uh, nominations in the office. I take it to an outside committee. That committee reads through all of them for the content, not the way it's written, but the content that's inside of there. And then they give me a recommendation. We go forward with that. That's how these guys rose to the top right here. And these guys are all outstanding gentlemen here. So first of all, let's talk about the rookie of the year. So what, really what the rookie of the year does, he has two ears for a reason, and he's there to listen. So he's got to listen and do pretty much everything that they say. Well, this guy right here, Cole Crawford, is our Rookie of the Year this year. 
He's done a phenomenal job. He's actually going to be one of our next paramedics. He's in paramedic school. So we're in need of that. So that's a double whammy there for us. So, Cole. Now, I could probably tell a lot of stories about Cole just because he and my son grew up best friends. And that right there. He may be a truckie one day. He likes tearing up stuff like that. <laughs> Our truckies do extrication. So, yeah, just don't for that. So next up is our firefighter of the year. This guy, has, uh, he, he's been here with us two years now. Come on up. This guy's been here with us for two years now. He's already got a life save under his belt. So obviously he's doing a great job. He's part of the team that helped save a life back in January of this year. And he's only been here for two years. So Mitchell. Congratulations. You ever ask about the time he painted his dad's state issued vehicle? <laughs> I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> Uh, and then last today, we have our sergeant of the year. Um, this guy, the, the sergeant, really what their job is, everything to do with the truck. So they've got to know all six sides of the truck. Sergeant Alley does that. He does it really well. Um, so with that being said, Sergeant Alley. I'll also say this about Sergeant Alley. All of these guys that are being recognized today are not recognized for one, e one incident that they've done. It's a consistency throughout the year. Sergeant Alley actually has been nominated for the past three years. So what that says to me is not that he did any better this year than he did the last two years, but that's that consistency that we're looking for in an employee. Outstanding job for him. All right, the last one is our officer of the year, which is Shane Lee, and he's feeling under the weather, so he won't be here today with us. So thank you all again. Appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Hey, Chief, before y'all sit down, I just want to uh, say a personal thanks. Uh, I have a friend, Jimmy Rogers, that has some heart problems. He called 911 the other night. Uh, the fire department responded. He had four, four people from the west side that went out. They said, be sure and say thank you. They did a great job, very courteous, very professional. So thank you for what you do for all of us. If there's an allotment on words, I think I've used all of mine for the rest of the day. <laughs> <coughs> a lot of great proclamations, and appreciate everyone's uh, patience and uh, taking the time for us to honor those uh, that were here today and what they represented. All right. Uh, we have any communication from City Commission? I'd just like to say thank you for the prayers for Mitchell Rupp and my friend Ken McHugh. Uh, Ken called the code for Eleven weeks and he passed away Sunday, so appreciate all the prayers. Thank you all. Yes, sir. No comments. Thank you. Yes, sir. No comments. Thank you. Yeah, Mayor, I've got a letter I'd like to read um, related to our, our fire department, too. Kind of a Mr. Kirkland just related to. I had a friend um, just uh, wrote this letter to, to Chief Lee. Um, I never imagined I would have a heart attack. However, I did have a heart attack at my neighbor's house. September 19th, between 2 and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. My neighbor called 911, and the fireman paramedics arrived within minutes. At that point, I had all the classic symptoms of a heart attack. The staff ran a cardiogram and determined, in fact, I was having a heart attack. They started an IV, gave me aspirin, nitroglycerin, and some sort of nausea. Three of the paramedics rode with me to the medical center and stayed with me until the doctor came into the room. These guys were professional and never hesitated in what was to be done next, drugs that I received did give me relief. 
I wish that I uh, could thank each of these gentlemen personally, and I hope that you will extend my gratitude to each of them. I am doing well and slow to get back to normal. We are fortunate in Dothan to have a department like yours with the talents and skills to help someone like myself in a time of real need. I want them to know just how pleased I was with the service and treatment I received from your department. Chief Williams, you should be very proud of your staff. I just want you to know that these young men did a superb job, put me at ease as much as possible, and I'm very thankful that they are available should I ever need them again. William Hall. Right. Um, <clears throat> Lord, continue to uh, lift Mike Schmitz up in prayers uh, to everyone. I think everyone knows where he is and what he's going through. So if you would, please, uh, I think the next few days are critical, and I uh, would like for you to, to lift him up. City Manager. Sir, thank you. introduce everybody to our October Employee of the Month, Jesse Culler. Jesse? Um, Sergeant Culler was a paramedic sergeant assigned to the Operations Division on A shift at Station 4. He was taken on the role of an IT liaison to his department. He works tirelessly to ensure all fire department's hardware and software operates at peak efficiency. This work is often done on his days off, nights, and weekends. Jesse is called upon at all times of the day and night to assist all fire department members as well as their IT department, communication center, and others. Sergeant Taylor's hallmark qualities are dependability, dedication, thoroughness, and high work ethic. He is continuously working to improve the system of use by the fire department members to serve our citizens and visitors. This is recognized by the fire department leadership team as well as his peers. An example of his dedication to serve his fellow men, the comm center contacted Sergeant Taylor after receiving a call from the suicide hotline to locate an IT address. Although he was off duty, Sergeant Taylor got to work and found the location of the address so that police and fire could be dispatched check on the suicide call. Sergeant Taylor has a unique combination of passion and talent for the work he performs to assist the fire department and the information technology department. He has been the lead in the development of the fire department website and others. He's always available and ready to assist. Sergeant Jesse Taylor is a role model in the city of Dothan and Jefferson. Congratulations. I just real quickly, other than keeping all our stuff working, he's a fantastic paramedic and a driver engineer. So he does a great job for 14 years. He's been working for the city, and he's getting ready to keep all our stuff going because we just had a hurricane become a Hurricane 3, and we hope it misses us, but he's always prepared <laughs> for us no matter what. And Jack, thank you for all you do working with him with our IT stuff. We really appreciate you letting Jesse help us the way he does from your perspective. Thank you, Jesse. Awesome job. Just a couple of other announcements, Marathon Mike. Um, some uh, good news uh, that should start filtering out into the community today. Uh, we're excited to announce uh, reopening plans and schedules for our outdoor basketball courts and our outdoor playgrounds. Uh, basketball court, outdoor basketball courts will open to the public from sunrise to sunset beginning Saturday, October the 10th. Uh, those are at Andrew Bell, Doug Sue, Kenny Park, Pine Hills, uh, Walter E. Bird Park, and Wiregrass. And then our playgrounds uh, will be open to the public again from sunrise to sunset beginning Saturday, October 10th. Now, there are going to be some rules and restrictions 
uh, that we'll have to follow and those rules and restrictions will be posted uh, and information will be available uh, through our Facebook page and other media outlets. Uh, but uh, hope um, that uh, that will kind of signal uh, a little bit of a return to normalcy uh, going, uh, going forward. Um, secondly, uh, um, Monday is uh, uh, city holidays, uh, so our garbage crews will not be uh, running uh, on schedule that week. If your routine pickup day is Monday, uh, your garbage and uh, trash will be picked up on Wednesday instead of Monday. Uh, other than that, Mayor, um, we are good to go. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, if you are following along on our agenda, we're on item number seven, communications from city clerk. We have an application this morning for a retail beer and retail table wine license for Murphy Mill, number 7779 on 3370 South Oak Street by John Moore. If there was anyone that was in the lobby or is in the lobby or here that needs to speak upon this matter, please step forward and uh, state your name podium. I'll give a moment and then hearing none I will. All right. So then we need a motion and a second for an approval or denial. Motion for approval. Second. second. Motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. yay. Any opposed say nay. Item number eight is a public hearing regarding the abatement and removal of noxious or dangerous weeds. If there's anyone that's uh, present in the uh, lobby or in uh, the room who wishes to speak upon this public hearing regarding the abatement and removal of noxious or dangerous weeds, please step forward and state your name. All right. Not here. All right. We don't have any, so this public hearing is now closed. Item number nine, resolution number 2020-264, declaring certain properties which are overgrown with weeds, scrub, wild bushes, grass, and other vegetative growth as interest to the health, safety, and welfare of the community as nuisances in order that the property be abated. Okay. Motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. yay. Any opposed say nay. Item number 10 is resolution number 2020-265, declaring certain properties which are overgrown with weeds, scrub, wild bushes, grass, Another vegetative growth is interest to the health, safety, and welfare of the community as nuisances and calling for a public hearing to be held on the matter during the regularly scheduled commission meeting on November 3rd, 2020. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 11 is resolution number 2020-266, requesting the legislative delegation to the city of Dothan, Alabama, to introduce and support legislation that would provide for an alternative procedure for abating tall grass and weeds. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second for approval. Any discussion or explanation needed? Yeah, I just want, for the public's sake, for you to read the differences. I was pretty impressed with it, so I think they will be too. Just the shrinking of the timeline, the saving of the money. Yes, ma'am, that's pretty much just the heart of the matter. We're, we're compressing the timeline, doing what a lot of the Shrinking it down from about six weeks to three weeks, so we can mm -hmm. work with the state. Yeah. We know we've been in the process uh, for several years now. This will be a new process, so, so we're we're excited about it. We we think it can uh, benefit, and and we there's a lot of those administrative costs that no longer will apply either. So mm -hmm. uh, even if they get through this uh, phase, it does affect the rest. Uh, so with with approval and. If I might, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to follow up on that. Uh, we appreciate Representative Lee uh, and his leadership on this and your support of this legislation. It's critical, I think, for our Love Dothan, Love Your Neighborhood programs. I think a lot of us experienced a lot of frustration uh, in the code enforcement process where um, you know, uh, the weeds are long. And then at that point, it takes another six or eight weeks to get through the process to actually get something done. So it can be quite frustrating. Uh, 
So this will condense that time frame, uh, maintain due process at the same time, uh, but allow us uh, to uh, continue our beautification efforts in, in both. And we I think are, are, are starting to make an impact uh, for us. So again, thank you and, and uh, thank our local legislative delegation. Again, Mr. Macrano, who and his staff have worked very hard on this, and uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It is it is a good change. We appreciate it. Uh, any other discussion or comment? All in favor, say yay. Yay. Any opposed, say nay. Item number twelve is resolution number twenty twenty two sixty seven, which is uh, awarding the bid, entering into a contract, and issuing a notice to proceed and other related documents to Max Foot Construction Company and LLC for the city of Dothan. New Cypress Creek wastewater treatment plant, ultraviolet disinfection equipment installation for the sum of $252,600, appropriating funds for the said project. Second. Motion and a second to approve any discussion or explanation. Hearing none, all in favor say yay. yay. Any opposed say nay. Item 13 is resolution number 2020 268, extending the agreement with the town of Kinsey to temporarily continue sewer billings based upon monthly water meter reading set forth in the City of Dothan Resolution 2019-124 to December 2021. Motion for approval. Second. I've got a second somewhere. Second, okay. <coughs> a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Comments? Just want to, you know, this is this the end of the extensions or uh, I know we've done this before. Is this, is this the date right here now? My opinion, I think so. I think we have been a uh, extremely flexible, and I think this should get them to the point they need to be. And I think we've done that, but that's my opinion. Am I correct that we were doing this because we were waiting on some grant funding in order to make some of the changes that were required? There was the SRF funding to do the actual rehab of this system, and they were going through the public uh, hearing process and I haven't heard that they've actually got the funds in hand yet but I will let you know as soon as I hear that. Okay, thank you. They are they are in compliance with the funds and it is our intention and the understanding that they've got to fix the lines whether or not they they put in their own system later on because it's, it's going into their own system and so ABM would require them to fix their lines as well so we're assuming that they're going to fix their lines first before they they actually would, would, would put in a system but uh, that's my understanding. They okay. need to do that anyway. They have Correct. pretty high hours. Yes. All right. Any other thoughts? All right. All in favor say yay. Yay. Any opposed say nay. Item 14 is resolution number 2020-269 agreeing to aid Foley, Alabama in its effort to recover from the devastation left by severe weather on September 16, 2020 by sending utility trucks, equipment, and city employees to operate this equipment. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Again, thanks to all that and, and every way able to go out and help other communities. We appreciate uh, what that says about our community. Um, any other discussion? All in favor say yay. yay. Any opposed say nay. Item 15 is resolution number 2020-270, issuing an emergency purchase order to Blank and Chip Con Contracting Incorporated of Dothan, Alabama for $62,500 to rebuild a section of the 30-inch diameter sanitary sewer trunk line behind 201 Hager Road and appropriating the funds for the said project. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and second for approval. Any discussion, questions, or explanations? Yes, you may just have an explanation for public record. Sure. We can, Mr. Mays. Basically, it's an area that uh, is right at the edge of the creek. The creek actually washed the line out. And all we could do is try to get it back together, but it's got a huge hump in it. Hopefully we have enough equipment on it to keep it from floating. The other problem you get into when you get in this size of equipment to get the right material in, we had to commit to this to get the material in, the, the ductile line that we need with the correct coating. So we've got all that in order, got that in process, and as soon as they get it, they're gonna go do the work. But it is, it does have a big hump. It's not causing any problems upstream, but uh, I guess.
that was going to be paid. Is this money coming from part of the, the bond money for the sewer fixes, or is this coming from? Fund balance. Fund, the, from the fund the, balance. The money for the, the bond money for the town is just the bond. Mm -hmm. So this is all fund balance money. Billy, is this a folklore line? It's near that. It's it's actually, uh, it's not right at that, but it's off of Hodgesville Road uh, by Hydro Road. It's not far it's from not the old It's not one we recently put in. No, it's not. Okay. It, it was put in in about 2000, 2001, when they uh, put the new plan in. Thank you. All right. All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 16 is resolution number 2020-271, entering into a contract with Network Technology Services to provide IT infrastructure support and network design services for an annual amount of 96000 and appropriating the funds for the said services. Motion for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? Just had a, one question. I think this is, uh, this is when we were advertising. We used to do this in-house. And we were ever, we've been advertising to fill that job. Yeah, that, that's correct, Mayor. We, um, we we do have a vacant position in our IT department. It's a upper level position. Uh, we have not uh, been able to successfully recruit for that position at this time. So we are relying on some uh, consulting services to uh, get us uh, through this time period until we are able to hire someone. And so it is our, still our desire to have someone hired yes. in, instead of subcontracting. Correct. Them. All right, any other thoughts, questions? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 17 is resolution number 2020-272, entering into a contract with ESO for installation of the IFC 2015 National Code Set Software Package in the City Firehouse application to bring the application up to the proper national code used by the Dothan Fire Department at a cost of $1,160. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Um, any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 18 is resolution number 2020-273, entering into a community traffic safety program and grant participation agreement with Enterprise State Community College through its Southeast Alabama Highway Safety Office for participation in the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs Law Enforcement Traffic Safety Grant Program. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item number 19 is resolution number 2020-274, rescinding resolution 2020-245, and entering into an agreement with A1 Business Solutions, LLC, for maintenance of a Konica Minolta color copier, located at Doug Sue's Recreation Center for a 12-month period at a monthly cost of $26.50. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second for approval and discussion. All in favor say yay. Yes. yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 20 is resolution 2020-275, awarding bids and approving other purchases over $15,000 by the city and appropriating the funds for the said purchase. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Item 21 is resolution 2020-276, approving advanced travel requests for city employees. Motion and second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. All right, city manager. Yes, sir. On the administrative meeting agenda for uh, October 6th, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the September 15th meeting. Motion to second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor say yay. Yes. Any opposed say nay. Uh, item number two is a hydrological evaluation of the Poplar Springs branch. This is a request from the Planning and Development Department to enter into a professional services agreement with Shoal Engineering Company to conduct a hydrologic study and conceptual design for the Poplar Springs branch and surrounding basin. Planning Director McDonald is available to answer questions as well as uh, planner, senior planner Bob uh, 
uh, Wilkerson. Um, be, I think Bob is coming in uh, to describe what we're doing uh, doing here, but um, just before he gets started, uh, I did want to say just a few words about this, and I appreciate Bob's vision here and the entire um, planning department. Um, I think this is an exciting beginning of what could be a very exciting project in the downtown area. Uh, I, for one, uh, until um, some time ago, was not aware that there was a creek uh, in close proximity uh, to our downtown area, and uh, that could be a very real asset for us in the downtown area and can help us connect our downtown uh, to uh, areas um, uh, to the east. And uh, this is a beginning point. This is a study of uh, how uh, that creek could potentially be daylighted. A lot of it is in concrete pipes and uh, how we can open that up and create a community asset, things such as walking and biking trails. Um, and so I, I do think this is very exciting. It plays very well into uh, the vision for downtown, the division uh, for the possible performing arts center and things of that nature. So um, again, this is a beginning point. Uh, we hope that this will open the door for us for some other possible grant uh, opportunities to uh, aid in um, and, and things of that nature. So Todd, Bob. city manager said there this plays very well into uh, the highway um, employees corridor plan and uh, a primary objective there being uh, connectivity between the downtown the medical center and of course um, on out to the apon so this could play a very um, significant role in that connectivity uh, but it's also something that I think we really do need to understand much better from a scientific and hydrological standpoint. Um, ever since I've been here um, with the city, I've heard from time to time people have raised the suggestion that could we have um, a walking trail, could we have some kind of water amenity with, with this system? Uh, so, uh, you know, we can't answer that without having an appropriate uh, study and evaluation. So, um, we pulled together uh, an RFQ and put that out and advertised it. Uh, Walter Scholl came forward as uh, we got a, a couple of responses back to that. Um, and Walter Scholl came back with a very good proposal to bring together for us both the scientific and hydrological study, um, trying to evaluate what is the capacity of that system to hold and stay water? Uh, what is the uh, potential capacity for uh, more storm water to filter into that system to, to charge it? Um, we know that there's a lot of water under the Lytton building there's water under this building. Um, and so we kind of need to, to understand, you know, where, you know, wh wh what is the amount of flow? What is, what is the overall capacity there? So if there's an opportunity to create this connective uh, piece and also to have this water feature, um, you know, that could be a great opportunity for the city of Bacon and all the things that are that are beginning to come together here. Um, so what, what they intend to produce for, for us in addition to uh, the engineering and scientific study is also a uh, conceptual plan of, of what this system, how this system might work both from the water and from the uh, pedestrian, bike or pedestrian within that connectivity. Um, we also have a, a good opportunity for funding on this. Uh, we have talked with um, ADEM on the, the PWSRF side uh, under the catchment of green infrastructure. Uh, they really look for these kind of opportunities. Um, 
this this globally or conceptually was discussed with them and they said you know bring us an architect and uh, so there is some very um, good potential for significant promising labor to help bring this to life so that thank you Paul uh, go ahead Mike. thank you any questions anybody all right well, move forward thank you sir and I'm not aware of any privileges of of the floor for the next item of adjournment. All right. Thank you, everyone.